Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 23 doing a review of the upcoming Return to Ravnica event decks. I'm very excited about these event decks. I like the idea of decks that you can just pick up off the shelf and play them in a Friday night magic. There's some interesting things going on with these. The retail price of them has raised from $20 to $25. Now I'm hoping with that raise in price we'll see a little bit of a raise in quality, although in looking at the decks they do tend to be similar to the previous decks that were put out. They're, one of these decks is very, very strong, um, although I'm not sure about how competitive it, it is. It's got a high rating here, a 4 out of 5 from me, mostly based on the fact that the value of the deck is really good and the concept behind the deck is also very strong. This is a Golgari deck that really utilizes green and black together to try to get value out of creatures. There's some very interesting creatures in here. I'm going to talk about those a little bit more in depth in a second, but let's first look at the value of this particular deck. This deck is amazingly well priced for the current environment. Woodland Cemetery is going for about $15 currently, and Thrag Tusk is sold out everywhere I know of for between $15 and $20. Even Wolfier and Disciple are solid cards in and of themselves. So this $25 deck is easily worth $35 to $40 at this point, and I would recommend picking it up just from an investment perspective. Now let's take a second to look at the competitive side of this deck. I really love the strategy that's put forward here. Nothing makes me happier than playing a Thrag Tusk, gaining 5 life, than playing a Disciple of Bolas the following turn, sacrificing the Thrag Tusk, gaining a 3-3, drawing 5 cards, and gaining 5 life. Well, Fear Silverheart also works really well in that same type of combination often drawing up to eight cards, and Golgari Charm is really a solid utility card that is included in this deck. Now, after all those positive things, you're wondering, why did I just give this a B-? minus? The main reason is, is that there are several virtually unplayable commons in this particular deck. I think you'd actually have to buy about three or four copies of this deck to make an extremely competitive deck. In the current environment, which has a significant number of zombies, they're going to run you over if you only have one Thrag Tusk and you have these uh, painfully bad smaller creatures in the deck. So unless you plan to buy three or four of these, I wouldn't recommend taking the deck to a Friday Night Magic unless you want to watch zombies eat you alive. The other deck here I'm actually really happy with from the competitive side, but questionable over the investment value of it. I like the idea a lot. This is a very easy, quick to learn deck. It has small creatures burn and really feels like a Rakdos deck. The value of it is a little bit questionable. Mizium Mortars is definitely good and could be an upcomer. Not happy seeing Dragon Skull Summit there. I mean. Where are the Ravnica cards? But I'll get to that a little bit later. Vexing Devil really underperforms in Standard, and Stormkirk Noble has never really made it out of the gates the way it should have. Um, Rakdos's Crackler, though, is an amazingly good uh, little uncommon, and definitely a nice to have a 4 of there. But the value in the deck is only about $15 for a $25 retail deck. This one's going to sit on the shelves for a while. If you actually want to play in a Friday Night Magic, though, this is the one that I actually really recommend. It's built like a quick burn red deck wins combination deck, so it's got your fast little 1 and 2 drops that it throws out at your opponent quickly. It allows you to burn the zombies that are out there, and it has some of the better removal in the environment. This is a deck that, from a competitive standpoint, I strongly recommend playing, and improving upon it would only take about 5 or $10 more worth of cards to make it one of the top tier easy 3-in-1 decks you could play in a Friday Night Magic. Last question I have here, though, is actually aimed at Wizards. Where's the Ravnica in these? in these, I mean, most of the rares that we're looking at are not from Ravnica. Lots of Ravnica branding, but all of the lands that we're getting are non-Ravnica lands. I would love to see some of the higher-end Ravnica cards in this instead. So this has been Brian Rowe with the Return to Ravnica Event Decks Review.